Kamusta? Today I will show you how to do a preventive maintenance service on the two oxygen sensors of a Toyota Wigo. An oxygen sensor is an electronic device that measures the difference between the amount of oxygen in the exhaust system and the amount of oxygen outside of it. It helps the vehicle's computer to adjust the air-fuel ratio. Our Vigo's computer would process the sensor's input and decide whether the fuel injectors would put in less or more fuel. The ideal ratio is 14.7 is to 1. Ibig sabihin, for every 14.7 grams of oxygen or air, 1 gram of fuel is required. This input, processing, and output loop would continue as long as the engine is running. The best time to inspect and clean oxygen sensors is when there's no check engine warning lights on the dashboard. As we can see, this OBD2 scanner is not showing us any previews, current, or even pending trouble codes on this 2017 model. The readings from the two sensors are telling me that they are still working as they should. The plan is to remove, inspect, clean, reinstall the sensors, and use the scan tool again to check the system. We are doing this because prevention is better than cure. We are trying to extend the life of these electronic devices kasi sobrang mahal ng mga ito, not to mention the labor costs. The Toyota Wigo has two oxygen sensors. The first one is called the upstream or pre-cap because it's located before the catalytic converter. Auto technicians and professional mechanics would refer to this as oxygen sensor bank 1 sensor 1. In an OBD2 scanner, it would show as O2SB1S1. Although the upstream sensor is quite visible under the hood, we need more leverage to detach it from the wiring harness, so we will remove the engine cover, air intake assembly, and the throttle body's vacuum hoses. Don't let these parts intimidate you, it's easy and safe to pull out. I bought this tool from the online store that we all hate and love. If you don't have one, a vice grip pliers would also do the job. We need to take down two 10 millimeter bolts. Turn the wrench counterclockwise to loosen them. Tanggalin muna natin ang mga bolts before we pull out the vacuum and throttle body hoses. Remove the air intake assembly by lifting up the whole box. This thing was seated on that slot. We now have more room to work on to detach the pre-cat sensor's wiring harness. This heated O2 sensor 1 has 4 wires. We need to press this release clip and pull the other end of the wiring harness. I'm right-handed so I'm using my left hand to press down the clip while my dominant hand would pull this portion away from it. We're using a small flathead screwdriver to loosen this fastener holding the four wires. This is a 22 mm half-inch drive socket to remove and install oxygen sensors. The space or gap on its side is for the wires. We will also use a 5 inch extension bar. Connect it to the socket's drive. Then we'll attach a 15 inch flex handle bar to it.
Let's disconnect the flex handle bar from the extension so we can easily take out the sensor from the catalytic converter. This is my 3-year-old upstream O2 sensor. It's been in that hole since 2017. Using a paper towel, let's cover the hole on the cat. The oxygen sensor was invented in the 1960s by Bosch. Volvo was the first to use one in the 1970s. These sensors provide better engine performance. It also makes our unit fuel efficient and compliant to government's emission standards. The second sensor is called the downstream or post-cat since it's located after the catalytic converter. Tinatawag din itong O2S, B1, S2. We'll now lift the front of the vehicle and put jack stands on both sides so we can go sa ilalim and remove the downstream sensor. The primary function of this O2 sensor is to monitor the efficiency of the catalytic converter. A bad cat would produce fumes harmful to the environment. There is also a release clip that we need to press before we can pull out the sensor tools connector. We also need to remove this wire fastener. The plastic is already so brittle so I decided to just cut it using a knife. We will use zip ties when we reinstall it later. Carefully put the O2 sensor socket into the device. Let's get our flex handle bar, attach it to the socket, then we'll turn it counterclockwise. We can now remove the sensor by hand. I think the downstream sensor is much cleaner compared to the upstream one. We'll cover this hole with paper towel. In doing this preventive maintenance service, we should not drop the oxygen sensors. We should not paint and cross-thread them as well. Do not hit them with a hammer or wrench. And we should not put dielectric grease on the sensor connectors. It's easy to tell the difference between the pre- and post-cat sensors. This is the connector for the pre-cat, while this is the post-cat wiring harness. We'll put gasoline into these glasses. To clean the sensor, especially that part which live in the exhaust, we'll soak the oxygen sensors in gas for 5 hours. I think 5 hours would be enough to clean the inside and outside part of these sensors. After that, we'll also use a carb cleaner spray. The upstream sensor is wide band while the downstream one is a narrow band. A wide band covers a wider band of data related to the air fuel ratio compared to the narrow band type. I'm using a cling wrap to avoid dirt from getting into these glasses. So I started at 8 o'clock in the morning and removed the cling wrap at 4.30 in the afternoon. Let's wipe them clean using paper towel. This is the thick one type before we spray the tips of these O2 sensors using a carb cleaner spray. We'll use paper towel again. I also clean the wire and connector casing by wiping them using a damp cloth. We'll put a small amount of anti-C space on the threads of the sensors. I'm using a small brush for this. Let's now remove the paper towel in the engine bay. Reinstall the O2 sensor 1 
turn the wire as you turn the sensor clockwise. Put the O2 sensor socket and extension bar. We'll torque it to specs, then remove the extension bar and socket. Don't forget to reinstall the wire to the fastener too before we reinsert the wiring connector to its harness. Let's now reinstall everything back in the engine bay. I removed the jack stands earlier while we're soaking the sensors in gasoline. I just placed them back under the vehicle again. Let's now reattach the downstream O2 sensor to the catalytic converter. We'll now take care of this one using two zip ties. Tanggalin natin uli ang mga jack stands and use our OBD2 scanner. As expected, we're not getting any check engine warning light. Our live data from our sensors 1 and 2 also look good uh, from our scanner. There's no pending emission related trouble code. I hope marami kayong natutunan. Remember that prevention is better than cure. We can do many preventive maintenance services on our WeGo the DIY way. Consider subscribing and support this channel. May God bless you. I'll see you soon.